<laughs> Let's give the Lord a big hand for praise, everybody. Thank you so much. Those of you who are able to physically stand for the Word of God, I pray that you will. Those who are not able, we stand. But I'm grateful today as we are here to hear the Word of God, and you've heard one sermon already. So I, I hope you're ready for sermon number two. Or perhaps, you know, if you listen to Minister Hobson, that was sermon number, this will be third, sermon number three. Um, but we are grateful today for being in the house of God on this first Sunday in Black History Month. Let's give God a big hand in prayer. By the way, I, um, my way of talking about this is not just Black history, African American history, but it's American history. Somebody didn't hear that, so I want you to know it's American history. You can't talk about black history without recognizing it's part of American history. And America couldn't be the America it is today, particularly from a standpoint of infrastructure and everything else, if it had not been for our ancestors. I'm proud of those that came before us. Aren't you? Give God a big hand of praise. Remember, as we celebrate this month, all through this month, remember that it was a number of people who helped us be able to do what we did. Amen? And I'm grateful for our ancestors. I'm also grateful for those who didn't look like us, who helped us. Do I have a witness here this morning? And we want to never forget that. Thank you, praise team, this morning. A beautiful job, and I noticed you had some new people up in the choir stand today, and we are grateful for that. Let us turn your attention, if you will, for the time that is ours, and we certainly welcome those on Facebook today. Thank you for those who are listening on the radio, those who are listening on the, um, on the prayer line. I want to really thank Brother Eric and uh, Sister, and I'm looking at her, and I can't believe she's at the door, Sister Barbara, for being willing to help us so that every Sunday we're not wondering who's going to be at the door to welcome people. Thank you so very much for your volunteerism. We really, really appreciate it. My friends, I want to turn your attention to the book of Genesis chapter 50. Verse number 20, chapter 50, verse number 20. In other words, this is the last book of the old, uh, rather of the book of Genesis, the last chapter, and this is from the New International Version. And our brother Joseph is speaking to his brothers, but quite frankly, as you look at the Word of God, often there may be a one who is being spoken to, or two, or three, or four, or five, however many are being spoken to, but the reality is they're speaking to us today in the 21st century. Amen? He says in this verse, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done the saving of many lives. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. I want to talk about divine intention. Divine intention, let us pray. Oh God, we come now in the name of Jesus knowing that this is a, seminal moment in the life of the church. We know that as we look on the landscape, there's so many things that are going wrong. There's so many things, dear God, that seem to be awry. But what we do know is that you've got some folks that you have tapped on the shoulder to make sure that they know no matter how turbulent the winds are, no matter how difficult the times become, you have tapped, you have tapped us on the shoulder right now in the 21st century to remind us, don't give up, don't worry, it's all going to be all right. Not because of who we are, God, but because of who you are. Do I have a witness this morning that we thank you for all that you're doing and pray that we never take you for granted and that we know 
that even in this moment we may be having a hard time, we need to understand you already know what's going on down the way, and we know that you're going to make everything all right. We love you this morning. We thank you this morning. We praise you this morning. We accept you, Lord, in our life, and we thank you in the name of Jesus. And the people of God said, the people of God said, the people of God said, amen. Let's give God a big, big hand of praise. You may be seated. God bless you. Those who are watching, we are thankful to God for you. I need to tell you right now that this was, uh, as I listened to Elder Tabor talk about January, I couldn't believe January went by as fast as it did. For those of you who I disappointed this month because my month was horrific when it came to time to be able to do stuff, to have to cancel appointments and stuff like that, I want to apologize because I know that my heart is such that I want to do everything that God calls me to do. And when I disappoint, I am extremely, it bothers me a lot. It's a shame on the eve of your birthday that your heart is broken because of what you feel you have disappointed. So I came to tell you right now that if I've done that, it's my, I take full responsibility and I want you to know that even this past week, trying to put my sermons together, I was determined that we were going away from divine. And I had all these ideas about how Black History Month was going to be set. And on Friday morning, the Lord let me know big time, no matter what I decided, this is his business and not mine, no matter what. Amen. And I'm grateful for that. And so as we look at this text today, this text is very relevant to every one of our lives. I promise you, if God has blessed you to lead out in whatever way, and let me be clear, leading is not about a title. Let me say it one more time. Leading is not about a title. Leading is about recognizing that you and I have an assignment, and that assignment must be done. And there'll be people that will come and get in your way, but you've got to continue because the assignment must be done. Do I have a witness here this morning? This text and context of this passage this morning is about Joseph. A wonderful man of the Bible that if you get the opportunity, many of you may know, but for those of you who don't, he was called on by God through a dream to let him know that he was going to, even in his teenage years, he was going to, at some point, he was going to be a ruler over many. And indeed, what Joseph did was made the mistake, but yet I consider it as I look in posterity that Joseph did not make a mistake. Joseph did exactly what God needed him to do. He told his brothers, I don't know about you, you can't tell everybody everything. I, I know I've got a witness somewhere because, because some folk don't want you to get up and to do the things that God has called you to do. Some people don't want you to take care of your assignment. They want to keep us down in the bottom of the crab bowl. Some of y'all are going to catch that on the way home. Recognize that as I think about those who we applaud during Black History Month, I want to be clear, all of them had to deal with the crabs. All of them had to deal with people who tried to divert them from their assignment. All of them had people who were talking bad about them. People who every time they tried to do something good, they were slapping them in the face behind their back. I know what I'm talking about this morning. The text tells us that Joseph told his brothers that one of these old days, he being the youngest of the brothers, told him one, told them that he was going to be in charge of them one day. And you know, that was just like a curse word as far as they were concerned. Who do you think you are? Come on now. By the way, they used, to, they used to sing a song when I was growing up. It, it, was, it was a recording from a generation before because I couldn't possibly be that old, you know, where it said, Mr. Big Stuff. So y'all would, wouldn't know. Y'all wouldn't know. Mr. Big Stuff, who do you think you are? Do I have any witnesses here? Am I the only one that remembers that song? 
that's the way Joseph's brothers saw him. But you see, Joseph's brothers, on the one hand, were thinking too much about themselves and not looking at their brother as anything but flesh and blood. And I come to tell you that what it reminds us of is we look at the intention that God had is that many times our assignment doesn't come to fruition immediately. What Joseph had to do is go through a lot of the things that he went through, the jealousy of his brother and being thrown into a pit, them not appreciating the, uh, the, the love that their father had for them and tearing his robe up into pieces. Come on, somebody. I know I've got a Bible student here somewhere. Knowing that Joseph ended up in position and indeed somebody tried, Potiphar's wife tried to put Joseph in a bad situation and Joseph made it clear that your husband has given me the keys to everything in the kingdom, but he hadn't given me the key to you. I know I've got a witness here somewhere. And indeed, even though Joseph was doing his part right, she didn't do her part right and tried to make it seem like Joseph tried his best to overtake her and he got thrown into prison for something he didn't do. By the way, let me pause for a minute and just tell you that I'm on my way to where Joseph ended up. Do I have a witness here somewhere? And it's clear for us to remember that sometimes when you're on your way to complete the assignment that God has for you, there are going to be some trip-ups on the way. But the fact is, we've got to remember that God has called us to get the work done. And yes, there's going to be a hiccup every now and then. Yes, there are going to be literally situations that literally take you off course. But I came to tell you that the God we serve will course protect us in a moment. You see, oftentimes we read those passages as, as if they are horrific moments in Joseph's life. As he's down there, look at it. Joseph, when he worked in Potiphar's house, grew up to be the chief man in Potiphar's house. When Joseph went to prison, he became the chief among the prisoners. Do I have a witness here? Uh, and, and, and by the way, that even though Joseph had asked uh, one of them who was going up to the king that they would remember that he is down there and he forgot about him. Uh, Joseph, still, the Bible says, if you look at the passages in Genesis leading up to passage number 50, chapter number 50, I want to remind you that every now and then, God paused in the language and said, and God was with him. Do I have a witness here? Which tells you that everybody else couldn't see it. Sometimes Joseph couldn't see it, but God was with him. And I need to tell you that when we get to the understanding of what happened to Joseph, what we remind ourselves of is the fact that it ain't all pretty on the way to the conclusion of your assignment. Do I have a witness here? When I think about the number of contributions that black people have made in this country and around the world, there are too many people that try to stop them from doing what they were doing. But I came to tell you that I love the fact that if it wasn't for Mr. Morgan, there would not be such thing as a, a traffic light. Do I have a witness here that when I think about Daniel Hill Williams and the open heart surgery. I've got to tell you that I'm grateful. Thank you, sis. I'm grateful for the fact that he did not let anybody get in the way. And if he had what I know many of us have had, people have said such things as somebody who looks like you shouldn't have the right to do what it is. But I came to tell you, it's not about what we look like. It's about the God that is in us. And we're going to keep on going no matter what. You see, you may have an intention to try to stop what God's people are trying to do today, just like they did in the old days. But you see, God's intention is still going to be greater than our intention. Do I have a witness here? God is going to make this thing all right. When we look at the context of this situation, these boys lied and said that their father, trying to spare their own soul, 
they lied and said that our father said on his deathbed that he wanted you to make sure to take care of them. But I need you to know that you see, there's a long distance between when Joseph got the robe and Joseph could give a robe. Do I have a witness here? And, and, and you see, the difference is that at every challenge, every issue, every side uh, issue that came up, everyone who tried to distract him, Joseph learned some things. Joseph learned some things. Do I have a witness here? And when we have hard times, our job is not to quit. Our job is to keep on going and asking the question, Lord, what am I to learn from this situation? I can say it because I too have had in my life where there are times I felt just like throwing in the towel and saying forget it. But I come to tell you that I got reminded this is not about you anyway. It's about him and it's about his kingdom. What assignment are you on? What assignment am I on? Yeah, there are going to be people that are trying to knock you down. There were some folks trying to do that to me last night, and I got to tell you, I didn't care because I learned to put my trust in Jesus. Do I have a witness here? I learned to trust in God, and when I learned that, I learned the lesson that Joseph learned, and when I look at what Joseph did, is that he did not, that his brothers didn't understand that every one of those issues that he dealt with, everything that he came and had to overcome, Joseph learned a lesson. You see, they lied, but Joseph had already made up in his mind that he was going to take care of his brother. Do I have a witness here? Joseph didn't need their lie. Joseph already had a heart of mercy and grace. Joseph already heard from God that this is your assignment. I came to tell you that as he looked at the road that he had traveled, he had been up and he had been down. But the one thing he had been all along is that God was with him. Do I have a witness here? God was with him. I need somebody here to know God is with you. God is walking by your side. God is with you. God is walking by your side. Your assignment is not over when the devil tries to knock you down. Your assignment is to learn what you need to learn. Pick yourself up and keep on going. We celebrate. We celebrate black history. But I need every one of you to know that you're a part of history today. You are a part of history today. We talk about that a wonderful man by the name of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. stood right here in November of 1961. That's history. And here we are nearly 62 years later. And I need you to know that the history book didn't end in November of 1961 that there were people who kept this church moving. There were people who were determined that the doors would continue to be open. And all I know is when the history book is written for the future generations, they're gonna know that we came upon a lot of obstacles. We dealt with a lot of issues. We dealt with the pandemic. We dealt with people not showing up. We dealt with people not giving, but we kept on going because this is God's assignment, not our assignment. We're going to keep on going because this is God's intention. My friends, I came to tell you that Joseph could say what he said because Joseph had something in his heart that God reminded him that he had brought him through many trials and many issues, many difficulties, and even though his brothers were not worth it. Do I have a witness here? Because all they ever tried to do is mess up Joseph's assignment. But listen, 
It's important that we remember that people like Joseph's brother are an important part of our assignment. Because see, some of us want to be able to have it made uh, and not have bumps in the road uh, and sit on easy streets and got it made boulevard. I've got news for you. There's going to be a distraction. There's going to be an issue where people try to distract you and take you away from your assignment. Assignment. But I promise you, God intends uh, for you to win. Do I have some winners here today? Yeah, I know sometimes it doesn't feel like it. Sometimes it feels like you're not a winner. I came to tell you, if you one of God's children, you're on the winning side. Do I have a witness here? And the issue for every one of us is to remember to keep on going in the midst of trial, in the midst of trouble, in the midst of tornadoes that come in and out of your life. You are on assignment to get God's work done. Joseph said, I know what you intended to do, but God intended it for good. And so I come today to tell you that every one of the issues that we deal with, when you know that you are centered in the assignment of God, these things are going to happen because we live in a fallen world. But somebody needs to know that if God sent you on this journey, he will not leave you from this journey. Yeah, there are going to be rough moments. Yes, there are going to be times you feel like giving up. But I came to tell you, God's divine intention is for us to learn something from the issues that we deal with. To learn something from the issues that distract us. Learn something from the times when you feel like giving up. Learn something from the times when you feel like you're all alone and it's all about you. And remember that sacrifice is what it's all about. The text says, you may have had an intention for harm, but God had intention for good. Yes. And I came to tell somebody here, here in the sanctuary, in the, on the radio, on the prayer line, definitely in the, on Facebook or wherever you're listening today, do not let Joseph's brothers get in your way. Because I got news for you, Joseph's brothers got cousins. And they still alive and well. And they will get you down. How many of you have been down sometimes? How many of you have felt like throwing in the towel sometimes? I came to tell you I know how hard it gets. I really do. But I just know that we have to put our faith in God. Because I promise you whatever comes, it comes to help us learn something, grow something, build something within us. To keep on going when the hard times come. Go have a witness here. There's more I want to say, but I'm running out of time. I want us to stand and give God a big hand of praise. Do I have a witness here today? His divine intention is for you and me to win. And his divine intention is for us to be able to understand that we are on assignment. You are on assignment. You are on assignment. You are on assignment. And when your family or your friends try to tell you, don't go to church, don't be that devoted, I came to tell you, that's when you and I need to remember that that's where we need to center ourselves in Christ. And remember, it's not about your family. In fact, it wasn't even about Jesus' family because they turned on him as well. But the fact is, and, and folks talked about him, and didn't matter, he had an assignment, and he came and completed his earthly assignment. And now he's completed his, completing his heavenly assignment. And so I beg you today, that if you love the Lord, and you want to have a stronger relationship with him, if you want to be able to have the strength to handle the assignment that you've been given or the moments where you feel down and feel like there's no way that you're ever going to get up right now, whether in your home, whether at your office, whether watching on Facebook, wherever you are here in the sanctuary, right now is your determination. I, I say to those who love Christ and have already given their life to Christ, every Sunday is an opportunity for renewal. Do I have a witness here? Every Sunday is an opportunity for renewal. But if you don't know him, and you never have the opportunity to share, 
I want you to know that if you've never been baptized, but come and give your life to Christ. If you have been and you've been a part of another church or another denomination, I want you to know that we're serious about the fact that all people are welcome in this house. Amen belongs right there. All people are welcome in this house. And so therefore, whether it's now or the end of this service, I want you to know that you have the right and responsibility to come and build a relationship with Jesus Christ. It's the best relationship. Do I have a witness here? It's the best relationship that you'll ever have. And that's the relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless your heart.